The first vector database we're going to take a look at is ChromaDB. At first, I'll show you how you can instantiate a ChromaDB object. And then we're going to go over a couple of common operations like inserting, deleting, before we finally go through querying the ChromaDB data um, and show you the different features that ChromaDB uh, gives you to add different filters. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so let me quickly show you uh, the documentation. So this is ChromaDB. You can go over the documentation. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know. Uh, in, in short, ChromaDB is a vector database where you can store embedding for your different documents. So any text data, you can create an embedding and store it in ChromaDB. Later on, when you have a question about the text data, you can ask it to ChromaDB through their utility function, and ChromaDB can find the relevant documents that it needs to fetch to answer your question. So in very short, that's what ChromaDB is, but I would highly encourage you to take a look at the documentation to learn more about it. Now, let's move to the actual code. So there are a couple of ways you can instantiate a ChromaDB client. Uh, the documentation shows you three different ways. One is called an ephemeral client, which is just going to be a client you use in one session. So ChromaDB is not storing any of the data locally. It is storing everything in, RAM, in, in your RAM. So essentially, when you, uh, when you turn on your or when you execute your Python program, you insert your documents, you ask your question, and then when the program ends, uh, you don't have any uh, trace of the data. And then the persistent client is the one that I'm going to use in this example. Using the persistent client, uh, ChromaDB essentially creates a local database using SQLite 3. Uh, so anything you have just created can be persisted for your future run. And in a more production setting, what you most likely will end up using is a client server mode where you can have your ChromaDB instance running in a different server than your web server. And whenever you have to interact with your ChromaDB database, uh, you can just use HTTP requests to uh, communicate between your backend and the instance where uh, ChromaDB is running. So in this example, we're gonna use the persistent client. So it's just one line to instantiate the client. After that, you see the try accept here. What we're do doing essentially is we're creating the collection. Imagine collection as a database. So any kind of logical unit that you can create um, in a database, anything that you would put in one database, it's synonymous in ChromaDB to store it as a collection. So in this example, we have just one collection where we're storing all our documents. But imagine if you have totally different applications, let's say you have an application that uses ChromaDB about sports and then one about food. Uh, and let's say they don't interact with each other. You can just create two different collections for them. Uh, but in this example, we're gonna create one collection to keep things simple. So I'm trying to create the collection. Whenever you try to create a collection that already exists, you get an error called the unique constraint error. So we're catching that error and then just getting the collection instead of creating a new one. So to sum up, all we're doing here is we're trying to create a collection named my collection. But if the collection already exists, we're just getting a reference to that existing collection uh, to do our next operations. Okay, so that's getting or creating a collection. And now we're going to look at inserting documents in it. So it's very simple to insert any new documents into, um, into ChromaDB. So you just use the upsert method, pass it a list of documents. And then for the same documents, you can optionally pass in IDs or metadata. Metadata takes the form of a dictionary and IDs can be any string that you, uh, um, that, that you can associate with your, with your document. In this example, we just have very simple one sentence documents, but you can imagine each document here being a PDF. So they can be as long as you want it to be. 
metadata again i have just created a couple of example metadata here to show you how the query works over here but you can imagine a good use of metadata being metadata about the file right so if each of your document is a pdf the metadata can be uh, about uh, the meta about any data of that file right so you can think file name when it was last created who was the author things like that similarly ids can be just a file name or if you have it in a database it can be your database id that maps to the document so all these are very customizable and you're going to soon find out that when we are querying uh, when we're querying chroma db we can use the IDs and metadata, metadata as filters. So instead of just telling or asking Chroma DB to scan every single document, you can tell it only scan documents with metadata category set to food, or you can tell it only, uh, only search the ones that have IDs one, two, and three. Similarly, whenever you're removing documents, you can just refer to them by the ID. So instead of telling Chroma DB, uh, remove the do a document that says, uh, this is a document about Hagia Sophia, you can just say, delete the document with ID four. So these are all the different tools that Chroma DB gives you, but uh, the most important part is the document here. Now, the first question is gonna be, uh, we are storing our document through this one command but how is the embedding being generated, right? Because in a vector database, you're not only storing this text here, but you, you're also storing the corresponding vector. So if I move quickly over to the right, you're gonna see uh, that we had the documents, right? And then embeddings was none. So let me get to that in a little bit, actually. Let's go back to our conversation about embedding. So uh, in a vector database, for your text, you want to store a vector representation of your text. So imagine just a, a vector of numbers for every text you have. And the number essentially uh, shows the different relationship between the texts, right? So uh, you have a text here called, this is a document about pineapple. Let's say the vector of it can look like something like this, right? Similarly, when you have oranges, it can look different, but still a little similar because both of them are about fruits. Uh, so there's like all different embedding functions that you can use. The purpose of an embedding function is to take in your text and then generate the vector representation of that text. Now, if you see here, I'm not explicitly passing it the vector for every single document, because I'm only passing in the document, the metadata, and the ID. So the way it works is if I scroll all the way up, you're gonna see I had a function called OpenAI embedding function, and I was passing it a model name and the OpenAI API key. And then I was passing the function to my Chroma DB client. Whether I was getting the client or creating the client, I need to pass in a uh, uh, pass in an embedding function. The embedding function I chose was the one from OpenAI, but most of the LLM uh, companies or libraries out there will give you an embedding function that you can use. So you can use one from Claude, you can use one from Google, you can use one from, from any of the 10, 20 different embedding uh, companies that are out there or LLM companies that are out there. So by passing in the function to my Chroma DB client, what I'm telling Chroma DB is anytime you need to turn a document into, uh, into a vector, use this function either to go from the text to the vector or from the vector to the text. Given I'm defining it when creating the Chroma DB client, I don't have to do it when I am uh, actually upserting my document. That said, Chroma DB does give you ways to insert data where you're explicitly uh, giving it the embedding for the document. So let's say when I'm, when I'm inserting a document called, this is a document about pineapple, I'm also gonna call a function to turn it into an embedding 
and then explicitly stored the embedding in ChromaDB. But the easiest way to do it is just configure your embedding function at the beginning. And then whenever you're inserting your document, ChromaDB figures out how to generate the embedding for that document. Okay, so that's all the absurd statements. And now finally, we have the fun part, which is gonna be querying, okay? So ChromaDB gives you a very simple method called dot query that you can use to ask any questions to ChromaDB. Now, this, so ChromaDB itself, it will not answer the question for you. Instead, it's gonna return the documents in your ChromaDB database that is most likely to have the answer. So in, in practice, how this is going to work is you're going to, you're going to query ChromaDB with your question. ChromaDB is going to return the documents that is most likely to have the answer. And then you're going to pass the documents to your LLM and the question. So you're essentially going to ask the LLM, here's my question. These are the chunks of text or these are the documents that is most likely to have the answer. Use the documents to help answer my question. Okay, so the, the second part of asking the LLM is the easy part. The difficult part is to figure out which documents actually have your answer. Because in this example, we have five documents, but you can imagine in, a, in practice, you might have a million documents, right? And if you have a million documents, and let's say only five of the documents uh, actually answers your question, when you're asking the question to your LLM model, you don't want to pass in one million documents to it. Instead, you want to narrow it down to the five documents and then pass those to the LLM. And that's where a vector DB can really help you, or a vector database. So now moving to the querying, ChromaDB gives you the query function. You give your query, which is at the string here, and results is the number of result you want ChromaDB to give you. So the number of documents to return, in this case, it is one. And then these are the different filters that you could use. I'll come to that in a little bit. So let me say, I'll, I'll change this to two. Let's say we ask it, tell me about apples, right? And then I'm gonna run this one. I'll give it a couple of seconds. And you see, we're getting two documents back. The first one is that Apple document, and the second one is the orange document, okay? The way the ranking is done is the, the documents that is most likely to have your answer is gonna be at the top, and then uh, the lower you go, the less relevant it becomes. So if you only want the best document instead of a couple, then you can just set this to one. And if you set it to one, whoops, then you're just gonna get that Apple document, okay? Now, where it gets more interesting is, uh, let's say I keep it to one, and my question is about Hawaii, okay? So nothing here, none of my documents explicitly mention the word Hawaii, but you can see like pineapple is more associated with Hawaii, because pineapples grow in Hawaii, it's an island, right? So using a vector search, you can get into this semantic or nuanced search, whereas a strict keyword search will not get you that, right? So if the semantic search works as expected here, the ChromaDB should give me the document with pineapple back, because that is the most relevant to my query about Hawaii. So let me run it. And there you go, I'm getting it about a pineapple, right? So let's see if I asked it about, tell me about a citrus fruit. Now, most likely you're gonna get orange. I'm not sure if pineapple qualifies there as well, but let's try it out. You see, you're getting oranges here, okay? Now, let's try to add a couple of filters to it. Let's say we wanna, give it a filter where I tell ChromaDB only pick documents that have the meta, uh, metadata category set to food. Okay, 
So now when I give it the citrus fruit question, it should still return orange. Okay, perfect. But if I change it to, let's say, uh, let's say we're gonna do location, okay? And the only documents with location is this Hagia Sophia one. Okay, now if I run it, you can see it returns to me the Hagia Sophia one uh, with a distance of 0 0.54. Okay, let me go back to food. And then I'm getting it a distance of 0 0.2 and then uh, oranges. So what you see here is by using the where clause, you can ask or you can tell ChromaDB to keep its query limited to the documents that has the filter, okay? Very similarly, you can also, you can also use the where document parameter and tell it to explicitly look for keywords within your document. So in this query, I'm telling it, uh, again, tell me about a citrus fruit but I am explicitly telling it that the document that you're scanning should contain the word pineapple. Now you're gonna see that instead of returning the document with oranges, it's gonna return the document with pineapple. So let's try it out. There you go, pineapple. And if I remove it, it's gonna go back to the better answer or more accurate answer, which is gonna be oranges. All right, there you go. So hopefully this was helpful. I'll have the uh, code linked in a pinned comment or description below. So take a look at it. The documentation of ChromaDB is really good, so you can learn a lot more, but hopefully this was enough to get you started in the right direction. With that said, I'll end, I'll end it here, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.